I wanted to share with you how we can adjust colors and white balances in your video files. This can be easily done using the Lumetri color panel and this is accessed by going to window and opening Lumetri color. In addition to opening the Lumetri color panel this way you may want to change your workspace. So far we've been working in the learning workspace but if we switch to the color workspace this will automatically open both the Lumetri color panel and the Lumetri scope. And again, you can go to window and you can open up your Lumetri scope by this particular window in case you don't want to change your workspace around. But for this example, I will work in the color workspace. Now that I have this open, I'm going to be working on this particular video clip right here. Now this video clip isn't horrible, but as you'll see by the time we're done, we're going to improve the quality of this image. Before we get into this, I just want to touch upon the Lumetri scopes. The Lumetri scopes are going to give you information about the colors within your video file. We have a bunch of different scopes available and these can be accessed by going to the wrench icon and then you can go ahead and turn on the various different types of scopes. I usually like to use the vector scope, which is a scope that is going to show you how the various colors are going to be distributed between your image. And as you can see in my scope, this little white area is pointing down towards cyan. And clearly I have a lot of cyan in this particular video clip. I also like to convert the waveform scope into a grayscale preset. So if we go down to waveform, if we change this from RGB to Luma, this is going to provide a luminosity information, which is going to show you how the white and black colors are distributed amongst your video. A hundred is going to show you a hundred percent white and zero is going to show you a hundred percent black. Usually we're looking for a video that is fairly well distributed amongst this area instead of having all of the colors bunch up between one section. Now this particular video doesn't have a distinct black point and it has a little bit of white points but nothing too significant. So most of the area of information is going to kind of be bunched up into the middle and we'll be able to use these scopes to improve the image. Moving on to Lumetri color. We have different categories available here. And if you click on any of these names, you're going to open up the various settings for this particular category. We do have some presets that come with Premiere and you can click on these and it will go ahead and apply those different settings to your file. You may want to experiment around with these to see how they affect your image. You can always eliminate them by going to none. I'm going to just work with custom settings right now. One of the quick ways that you can improve your image is you can use the eyedropper tool for white balance and click on something in your image that is distinctly white. When you do this, it can help to remap the rest of the colors. Now, because I already have an area that is white that isn't appearing as a different color, it's not going to make a big difference, but it did reduce the temperature setting a little bit inside of the basic correction. We can change this value by sliding this. And if I slide to the left, I'm adding more blue. Whereas if I slide to the right, I'm adding more orange tone. So I want my image to be a little bit more blue. So I'm going to slide the temperature over to the left a little bit. Tint will either add magenta or green. And if you ever use one of these sliders and you want to reset it, you simply double click and that's going to reset the slider. Saturation is going to either saturate or desaturate your file. So depending on your goal, you can go ahead and add or eliminate a little bit of saturation. So I'm just going to add a little bit. Under the light category is when we can control things like exposure. So I'll just give a tiny bit of exposure. Contrast. And as you can see, I can enhance the contrast. And when I'm making these changes, if you keep your eye on the scopes over on the left hand side, you'll see that these values are going to be expanding and changing based on the modifications that you're making. Highlights is going to add more or less highlights. I don't feel like I need to do anything there. 
shadows will intensify or eliminate shadows. So we'll just bring this to the left a tiny bit. Whites is going to make the whites brighter. Again, I don't really feel like I need to do anything on this particular image. And black is going to add more or less black to your image. So we'll drag over here to the left just to make this pop. If you want to compare your adjusted video with the original, all you need to do is either click off the effects, which is going to revert back to the default setting. So you can see that by just doing a little bit of work, we've improved the quality of the video quite a bit. Or you can just turn off the basic correction settings and that will let you see what you've done. If we go to the creative area, this is another place that you can add adjustments and all of these are their own separate categories. You have the ability to add a faded film type of effect. We can add more sharpening or less sharpening and you can see my video gets blurry if I drag to the left gets a little bit sharper and crisper if we drag to the right. Vibrance is going to be similar to saturation except for vibrance is going to affect the overall mid-tones of your image. While if we affect saturation, it's going to just saturate the entire thing. We'll go ahead and just add a touch of saturation. In addition, we can control the tint balance down here by experimenting with this slider. And you can go ahead and add particular types of colors. So if I use the shadow tint and drag to the bottom left, I'm adding more blue to my particular image. If you want to reset anything, you simply double click. In addition to this, there are some preset looks. We can access these by using the pull down menu, or my preference is to use these little arrow which is just going to filter through the presets and give you a preview of what that particular preset is going to do to your particular file. So if you find any of these to be helpful, you can go ahead and preview these. And if you decided that you wanted to apply one of these, you would use the pull down menu and choose that particular effect. I'm going to switch this back to none to remove it as I'm going to be working with the custom effects. The curves area is a great place that you can adjust your basic curve settings. Now there are a lot of different areas in which you can make adjustments. I generally like to focus on the RGB curve. Most video clips are just going to be improved by adding a slight S curve. This is going to help the whites to pop and the darks to be a little bit more significant. If you feel like you need to make further adjustments, you can experiment around with the other settings that are in the curves area. The final area that I'm going to touch upon is the vignette. The vignette allows you to go ahead and set a vignette around the edge of your image. And if you drag to the left, you'll get a darker, almost burned edge. If you drag to the right, they're going to be lighter. I tend to like the darker settings and you can adjust how much of a vignette you want to use by experimenting with the midpoint. Roundness will control the roundness and if we actually eliminate the feather, this will be more apparent. So by default, it's more of a rounded rectangle and as you drag to the right, it becomes more of a perfect circle. So you can control the amount of rounding that you might want and then feathering is just gonna soften the edges and make it a little bit more subtle. So this is with the vignette. This is without the vignette. I feel like the vignette just kind of pulls in the focus to the center part of your particular video file. And once again, if we just want to compare what this looked like before, this is our before and this is our after. So you can see that we've really made some improvements to this particular video clip. Just like our other effects, if you go to the effect controls, the Lumetri color is just a effect that's been applied. So once again, all of these settings are things that you can modify using effect controls and many of them can be keyframed depending on what it is that you're adjusting within your file. I use the Lumetri color quite a bit in my projects because I'm able to refine the video and really improve the overall quality. 
If you have other videos that are similar in hue, you may want to try applying those same settings. In order to do this, we can copy the video clip and then we'll just move on to the video clip in which we want to apply the exact same settings. If we right click, we can choose to paste attributes and then you can choose the attributes. So I'm just going to turn off everything except for the Lumetri color. I'll click OK. And then those same effects are going to be applied to this video clip. If you find that this video clip needs to be modified, you would simply go into the Lumetri settings and you could adjust any of these and dial this in specifically for this particular clip. In this way, we are able to modify our video files and improve the overall quality. Go ahead and use the Lumetri color as needed. I think you will really find this to be an excellent addition to your workflow and help to improve the overall quality of your video files.